What up, YouTube family? This is your boy, Sticky Situation TV, and we're back with another one. Before I start this story, I just want to tell all my supporters how much I appreciate the love and support. My videos are hitting so much numbers right now, I can't explain how happy that makes me. I read all my messages on IG and comments on my videos. They motivate me so much to keep doing this. I barely have haters in the comment section. This all seems so unreal to me still. I just started doing this and I'm already at 12k subscribers. Believe it or not, that's not easy to reach. But although I'm getting good views and subscribers, 90% of viewers are still not subscribing to my channel. So please make sure you subscribe. I'm trying to hit 20k subscribers before the year ends. Anyways, let's get to the video. Today we're going to the Dirty South with it, the state of Alabama to be exact, in a city called Mobile. This story is one of the craziest I ever heard about a current rapper in the industry right now. A lot of rappers these days have cap in their raps. Cap Not too many real ones rap. out here right now, but when it comes to that street life, this rapper tops most rappers who claim to be in the streets. I mean, this dude is really with the business. This story is about a rapper named Honeycomb Brazy. Honeycomb Brazy, real name is Nashawn Jones, born in Atlanta, Georgia, February 23rd, 1995. Although Honeycomb Brazy was born in Atlanta, his family moved to Mobile, Alabama, where he was raised. Honeycomb Brazy is from a hood called Happy Hills. During the mid 60s, new housing projects would be built in the Happy Hill area. After the project suffered from so much drug problems and violence, they began to shut down the projects in Mobile, Alabama. These projects would be abandoned for years until a few years ago, project buildings in the area would be torn down and demolished. Although the housing projects were torn down, Happy Hills would still suffer from drug problems and gang violence, and Honeycomb Brazy would be in the midst of it all. Honeycomb Brazy was raised by his grandparents due to his mom and dad always being incarcerated. Honeycomb Brazy's father is Big Honeycomb Brazy from Bounty Hunter Bloods, a blood set that started in Los Angeles, California. Big Honeycomb Brazy is a well-respected gang member who is currently doing life in prison. And then your dad is in jail too, so your whole family's kind of dysfunctional. My daddy got life in and he doing life. You know, free my dad, that big con. Honeycomb Brazy's mother would also be in and out of jail most of his childhood. She, she in and out. <laughs> she in both her in and out there, boy. Honeycomb Brazy would be arrested for his first time at the age of 10 years old for breaking into a warehouse and riding go-karts with his friends from the neighborhood. They didn't know they had triggered the alarm system and while riding the go-karts, police would arrive to the scene and arrest Honeycomb Brazy and his friends. Honeycomb Brazy would receive probation, which he's still on currently to this day. Honeycomb Brazy would drop out of the eighth grade and never return to school. At this time, he would be living with his aunt. At age 13 years old, Honeycomb Brazy would have his second run in with the law, but this time it was way worse. While Honeycomb Brazy's father was incarcerated, he would still be making moves from prison. Long story short, Honeycomb Brazy's cousin would be doing business with Big Honeycomb and would soon owe him some money. 13 year old Brazy would see his cousin and approach him for the money he owed his father, which turned into an argument. Honeycomb Brazy pulled out a pistol and shot his cousin, which resulted to him being paralyzed. Whoa, wait, wait. You shot your cousin? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Like on accident? Nah, like on purpose. <laughs> Honeycomb Brazy's cousin lived from that situation. He was paralyzed, but soon made a full recovery and gained back his mobility to move. Honeycomb Brazy would be arrested for the shooting an attempted murder of his cousin and had to do a three-year jail sentence for the first time. He was released at 16 years old and soon after he would be arrested again not too long after his release for a robbery which the victim was also shot in the leg. December 12th, Nashawn Jones, 16 of Mobile, 
was arrested Thursday and charged with first degree robbery and first degree assault. Police officer Levy said that at 5.55 p.m. on December 12th, the victim was walking on the 800 block of Center Street when he was approached by two teenagers. When they stopped and talked to him for a few minutes, one of the teens pulled out a handgun and shot the victim in the leg. The second teen, identified by police as Jones, took money from the victim's pockets and left the scene. Honeycomb Brazy's friend that shot the victim was Derek Thomas, Brazy's right hand man. Honeycomb would never snitch on his friend Derek Thomas that shot the victim. When the day Honeycomb Brazy would face a judge to be sentenced, his friend Derek Thomas would be shot and killed over a $5 dice game. According to prosecutors, 40 year old Anthony Jenkins shot Derek Thomas in the head on March 4, 2012. Police have said that the two were engaged in an altercation following the porch dice game. See, I did three years, I was 13 years old. I did three years straight, got out when I was 16 for some attempted of murders and some most type of shit I can't talk about. Got out then, what I did. I ain't do, I got out then, I ain't do shit I got locked back up for. My homeboy dead did this shit, but he dead now, so I can talk about it. But dead had wet the nigga ass up, raw the nigga ass. I was there right now when they happened. And the nigga ain't know who dead was, nigga knew me. So a nigga picked the folks on me, but shit, now I know that attempted of murder, and the robbery first, and I'm on the run and shot a nigga, got me a salt charge. So now I'm in the bitch like, man, damn. They want me to tell, I can't tell, so get what? I took 20 split four. That four more years a nigga had to do straight, you feel me? Soon I took the deal, debt get killed. That's why I long live debt forever, like, LLD, long live debt. Soon I take the case for debt, he get whacked the same day. Soon I go to court, he get killed the same day I take the case. Now this is where the story turns into a sticky situation for Brazy. Sunday, February 21st, 2016, around 8 at night, Brazy would come by a female friend's house to pick up some money while the girlfriend's boyfriend, Ladarius Moore, aka Stank, was not home. Honeycomb Brazy knew Stank since they were kids. While Brazy was at his female friend's house, Stank would come by unexpectedly and his girlfriend wouldn't let him inside the home. He felt as if she was hiding someone in the house so he broke into the house by kicking the door in. When Stank got in the house, he seen Brazy inside and they started arguing, which turned into a fight and somewhere in between them getting physical, Brazy pulled out a pistol, shooting Stank and unaliving him. He then left the scene and police started a homicide investigation. Brazy would be a person of interest of the shooting and the police would go on a manhunt to find him. You have a person of interest in the case. They believe the shooting stemmed from a domestic dispute. It was very heartbreaking seeing that he has a small child who now would never know who his father is. Police say 22-year-old Ladarius Moore died at Woodland's apartments around 8 last night. Family members tell us Moore lived here with his girlfriend. The female subject was there and he showed up. She didn't want to let him inside and allegedly it appeared that he kicked down the door and forced his way inside the residence. There was another individual that was there and there was an exchange of words and the other individual reacted, which caused the shooting. Pritchard Police Investigator Robert Martin says Moore was shot multiple times. They now have a male person of interest in the case. We won't say whether he was inside the residence at that time or he just showed up on the scene, but we do have a person of interest at this time. The person who alleged did the, um, the act. If a person that already has a violent history, I think it was senseless violence that needs to stop because every day someone's dying in a mobile. While Brazy's on the run for the murder of Stank, a beef had started and he was going back and forth with Stank's people. Even though he was beefing with Stank's people, strange to say, Brazy was still in good terms with Stank's brothers, which he talked about on an IG Live. I still with the, I still with the nigga brothers who brothers I killed. Like we still hang around each other. And you think they other brother don't even like me. He wanna do something to me. But you think I be wrong the nigga brother brothers who I killed. Like they got the same daddy. They buy six something on and I run with them. You think they'll be wrong with me if I'm fake? Like now you killed our brother we with you. 
Nigga, I'm really a real nigga, bro. I'm really like that. I'm telling y'all, I'm really solid. Like, I'm really solid. In real life, bro. Like, real talk. Now, this ain't no wrong word for lie. Black and white. I caught this murder case. This in black and white. You feel nigga kicked the door in on me. And I had to handle my business. And I had got self-defense for it. I got self-defense for it. And you know, they what they watch started by. They what they all really struck up by. They watch, they what they had. A nigga grandma and granddaddy dead about all this. It started like, yeah. But man, niggas, brother still. I mean, like, I was folding them, boy. We see each other, we yeah. And like, you know, like what it is. But like, nigga living like that, bro. Not too long after, Brazy would eventually get caught by the police and charged for the murder of Ladarius Morer, aka Stank. Brazy had a hard time in jail being involved in stabbings and fights. He even later admitted on an interview he stabbed three people in one day. Like hell, yeah, I yeah. stabbed three niggas one day. <laughs> like, on blood, <laughs> I did that on blood. Brazy also would be locked up with his own dad and they both would share a cell together. Brazy would beat the murder charge after serving 12 months in jail. He would beat the charges because it was looked at as self-defense. At least he was able to spend some quality time with his father while being incarcerated, catching up on life with each other while being Sally's. Brazy would never get to experience these things with his father due to his life sentence. Brazy would get right back to where the beef took a pause while being in jail. As soon as Brazy got out of jail, about a week later, he was involved in a shooting where he was shot eight times, even being shot in the head. Brazy was in the hospital in a coma fighting for his life but soon woke up. His doctor told him he wouldn't be able to walk again but luckily Brazy beat those challenges and was successful with his physical mobility. They, they, break, take, the they do it like that and then take the other piece off. What those names are? D-E-N-L. Turn around. Turn around. Turn around. Man, man, he's smooth. You know another piece of text. Come here. Come Honeycomb Brazy wanted to get out of Mobile to get away, so he went to stay in Atlanta for a little while to lay low. But revenge was the only thing in Brazy's head. He wasn't even able to focus on rap, so he left Atlanta to go back to Mobile. When Brazy touched down in Mobile, he went straight to war, sliding on the ops back to back, even admitting on a video once he slid on the ops four times in one night. Since everyone thought Brazy was still in Atlanta at the time, his ops would slide at the wrong enemies and shot at someone's grandma's house. Brazy didn't want them to get the wrong person or someone's grandma for his dirt. So he posted a picture of himself on Instagram showing he was back in Mobile. Then when I shoot up, fam going out, boom. Like, nah, I ain't feeling the vibe. I gotta go spin. So I shoot back to Mobile. I can't eat walking there for real. I'm spending like real talk on my soul. I'm spending every night I came down there. Uh, and them niggas know that I spent like four times one night. And I knew they know me. Cause I posted the picture the next day to let them know of me. They thought I wouldn't even in Mobile. They just had everybody getting shot at. Shit getting shot up. Niggas spending this, spending that. This on dead gray, on blood. I ain't doing no line. Niggas spending every day that whole night. They think it's some more niggas spending, so they go hit that some more niggas. <laughs> that boy, real beef in the city, though. Blood, like, boy, it's smoke, though. Hell, <laughs> so you're a devil, though. If you got beef, a nigga spit on you. You don't know who got you, you feel me? So we spinning. They go hit that some more niggas. But they end up shooting a nigga grandma house up. So when they shot a nigga grandma house up, I'm like, nah, I'm finna let these nigga know I'm down here. I'm finna let these nigga know I did it. But I ain't finna tell on myself and be like, oh, I did this, I did that. But I'm finna post this little picture in Mobile, in my project, where I'm from, Happy Hill. I'm finna post this picture in Happy Hill and let these nigga know I'm in the city. I'm out there coma, they thought I was dead, I'm back. So y'all yeah, post the picture, so now they know, oh, that nigga come in Mobile, so. He did that, woo woo woo. Yeah, he did that. But the only reason I posted the picture because they shot a, a nigga grandma house up. I don't even know the nigga. I just heard like daddy hit bro grandma house thing and he woo woo woo. And I'm knowing he ain't do that. 
So I'm gonna get him out that jam, like, no, bro, I ain't do that, y'all. Don't hit it, grandma house up, like, no. I don't want no grandma getting killed by I did, you know what I'm saying? I'm gonna be on my chest. So I ain't rocking like that. I'm gonna go on here to let him know, y'all, it's Brazy. In 2018, Brazy started focusing on his rap career and started taking it serious. He dropped a 7 minute freestyle that shook the rap game up and got big record labels paying attention. Then he started just going crazy and dropping music video after music video and they were doing numbers. He later signed a deal with Jay Prince's Rap A Lot Records in 2020. In early 2020, Brazy would be arrested for violating his probation. Brazy again had to face a judge for possession of marijuana and a gun. At a house on Pleasant Valley Road, Detective Wood went to the front door with another detective and Detective Hunter went to the side of the house. Detective Wood knocked on the front door and someone inside the house asked who was there. Detective Wood announced it was Mobile Police Department. The homeowner Dennis Perdue had tried to escape by the back door. Purdue had in his hands a gun and a bag of marijuana. During this time, Detective Hunter heard a noise on the side of the house and he saw someone inside the house tossing something out of the window. Detective Hunter later went on the side of the house and found several bags of marijuana and a digital scale. Inside the home, they found marijuana and multiple firearms all through the house. In the living room on the table, law enforcement officers found a Glock brand gun case that was empty. The detective arrested everyone in the house. They found a large amount of cash in Honeycomb Brazy's pocket. Honeycomb Brazy denied knowledge of the guns and marijuana, but he admitted that he knew about the empty gun case in the living room. Detective Wood testified Honeycomb Brazy did not live at Purdue's house. Long story short, he went to court and the prosecutors were unable to prove that Brazy was in fact in possession of the marijuana and guns. Since it wasn't even his home that was raided and he himself didn't have no marijuana or guns on his person. So no charges were filed on Brazy and he was once again a free man. Not too long after being released on November 10, 2020, Brazy would be on IG Live where he again was in a shootout while he was with his people in front of a barber shop in Montgomery, Alabama. Yeah, are they not the back one that? That what you wore? The car part. Deal with it. I'm on this side. You wanna keep it in front? Yeah. What you want? What side you was off? Oh, I'm dead on right here. Cause the car was like this. What the car was? I'm on this side. Y'all saw me. I'm in the middle of the street on this. All right. The bitch. You got what you say, man? <laughs> nigga, if my little if my little brother got cancer, nigga, my little brother out here fight show your head, man. For real, my little brother fighting cancer out there, whole nigga. My mama, I, I know got, where going. I got my little brother with me, nigga, fighting cancer, nigga. You not gonna play with me while my little brother with me fighting cancer? Is you nigga stupid?
Them niggas hit, they hit that whole world. They were hitting at this car, man. That's why that nigga looked in that car, man. You said that nigga looked in that car, man. Y'all, you told that nigga, ain't nobody here, you don't know nobody. That was that same nigga. So get what? He felt some type of way. He, he did that for you, Rondo. He felt some type of way about you woofing out him. He like, shit, you in my city, you woofing out him. Who there? He like, you in my city, you woofing at a nigga. Yeah, that's why they, they sprayed that hole. That why, so this why the Jeep ain't get hit. It's just, we got a gun in it, they know we together, so they would made them hit the back wonder, bro. Yeah, you feel me? But I knew they could have got off right now. But like, ain't no way y'all ain't got off. That nigga, that nigga was trying to get run, though. Yeah, we probably be dead. We probably be dead, huh? Like, I don't respect that. Man, this is a wild story, man. Brazy couldn't catch a break. He was going through it back to back. That must have been very stressful, man. Like, he's a real soldier for sure. They were definitely trying to get him before he made it out. They wouldn't let this man breathe. But let's get back to this crazy story. Now this is where the story gets really sad. This one hit home for reals. The most unfortunate thing happened to Honeycomb Brazy. February 17, 2021. The grandparents of Honeycomb Brazy were having a normal night at the home like any other night. But out of nowhere, a barrage of bullets started piercing through the house abruptly. Sadly, bullets hit their oxygen tank, which caused an explosion that led to a gas fire. At the same time, striking his grandparents multiple times with gunshot wounds as the house goes up in flames. They weren't able to make it outside the house and both lost their lives while the house burnt down to the ground. Fire trucks, police, and different news platforms rushed to the scene. This would soon become a homicide investigation. Man, this is like, man, I'm talking about unbelievable. Unbelievable. Breaking now, a gut-wrenching scene in the Happy Hill community, an elderly couple dead after their home explodes. It's a story we first broke last night at 9. And just minutes ago, Fox 10 News has learned the couple's death now being investigated as a homicide. That's according to MPD. Let's get right to our Fox 10 News investigative reporter, Brendan Kirby. And Brendan, now you talk to neighbors who tell you they heard gunshots before that house exploded in flames. That's right, Byron and Lenise. But first of all, let me just have you take a look at the wreckage here uh, from the scene. Neighbors said that they heard multiple gunshots and the agents from the Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives are also investigating. Two people were found dead in a burning home Wednesday night. Family members identified them as Tony and Layla Lewis, a couple that had lived on Dr. Thomas Avenue for decades. They are the grandparents of rapper Honeycomb Brazy. Frederick Allison, a cousin of Layla Lewis, lives several houses down the street. He says he heard gunshots and an explosion. I heard a couple gunshots and, um, and I heard a big boom. And when we heard the boom, we tried to go down now, uh, open the open the door I mean get to the door but Allison says the house was fully engulfed by that time they were good people man they didn't deserve it the aftermath is devastating the Lewis home completely gone and the house next door which also caught fire is now unlivable Jesse Howard and his mother Pearly Allison Howard said they heard the gunfire first we heard gunshots so we had to hit the floor we waited in the house for like 10 minutes then after that we we came out from the house and saw that both Houses was burning, so we yeah. called the fire department. It's unlivable on um, something somebody else did, you know, and that's just not right. Mario Yao, who lives around the corner, filmed the fire Wednesday night and called 911. Uh, well, what I heard and felt first was like a big boom, like a sonic boom. Uh, I jumped up, ran to the front door to see like what was going on because I know we have a lot of elderly neighbors around here. After the neighbors and the family members spoke to police and told them what had happened, this became a homicide investigation. Most of the evidence was burned in the fire and it was hard to tell whether the grandparents died from the fire or the gunshot wounds they suffered. It was very unfortunate that the two innocent elderly people had to suffer from the street beef their grandson Honeycomb Brazy was currently in. Honeycomb Brazy would post pictures of his grandparents and messages back to back on Instagram reminiscing 
and grieving over his grandparents. Brazy was going through hard times back to back. He couldn't catch a break. But he stood tall keeping his chin up for the celebration of life and funeral of his grandparents. Not too long after in May 2021, Brazy would be arrested for the shootout he was in November 2020. This was a probation violation because he was a felon around guns. Since he posted it all over Instagram, it was easy to convict him and revoke his probation with evidence he posted himself. This is an example why you should never post stuff like that. Even if you think it's going to go viral and show the world that you really live in like that. He would be facing 15 years in prison and everyone thought it was over for Brazy. This must have been really hard for him since he just lost his grandparents not too long before. While in jail, he would post on Instagram that he was going through it in there. Saying the officers would continuously shake his cell down, calling him racist words, strip searching him for no reason, throwing him in a lockup cell with no blanket or mat to lay on, making him sleep on the hard dirty floor, not feeding him, and even beating him several different occasions. It would even get worse for him when the prison found out he was posting these messages on his Instagram. He also was going through it when he found out while in prison that his little brother from his mom's side, Lemiron Sebastian Vale, would die after his battle with cancer January 29, 2022. He was one of the guys that shot back at the dark gray BMW that slid on them in front of the barber shop November 2020. Brazy was losing people back to back. February 2022, Mobile Police arrested Darren Southall, Terrence Watkins, Jamarcus Chambers, and one unnamed suspect that was not in custody yet. All four have been charged with two counts of murder and several counts of shooting into a home of Brazy's grandparents. It is believed that Southall ordered the hit on Brazy's grandparents. Southall was already identified by Mobile Police as a person of interest in the murder back in May. Southall is an accused drug kingpin who reached a plea deal in November of 2021. He already faced up to 35 years in prison for these charges. What makes everything crazy is Southall is the uncle to Ladarius Moore, aka Stank, the man honeycomb brazy unalived back in 2016. So the murder of his grandparents was retaliation for Stank. Southall was a big time drug kingpin. He admitted he took in about $24 million during the time of his operation. So Brazy was beefing with a big dog who had the money to go to war. Brazy was really going through it. And with all this going on, Brazy was feeling that Jay Prince wasn't really supporting him while incarcerated. He would post messages on IG explaining his frustration with Jay Prince multiple times. While Brazy was in prison, he would have a tight friendship with rapper Finesse two times. He would even send him money and take care of him even while he was in prison himself. Even before all the issues with Jay Prince and rap a lot, Brazy would tell Finesse two times he would talk to Jay Prince about signing him and setting up the play for Finesse two times when he gets released from prison. In later messages, Finesse two times would ask Brazy, have you talked to Jay Prince yet? And Brazy would tell him, not yet, just be patient. He gonna make it happen. When Finesse two times got out of prison, he went straight to Jay Prince and got signed to rap a lot records and showed no love to Brazy. Brazy was definitely not feeling this. He felt like he was stepping on toes and trying to take his spot. He wasn't even contacting with Brazy at the time. Brazy would start expressing on how he felt about Finesse two times on IG post. Jay Prince and Finesse two times were probably thinking since Brazy was going to be away for 15 years, who really cares? But out of nowhere in the middle of November 2023, Brazy would jump on IG Live and with a big smile on his face, showing that he was a free man again. Nobody expected this from Brazy. Everyone thought he was going to be gone for 15 years. 
As soon as he touched down, he would diss Finesse two times, calling him a rat. He went on live clowning everyone for thinking that he had 15 years in prison and spoke about how he was riding home in an SUV after Jay Prince picked up Finesse two times and put him on a private jet. Wait. I'm trying to see what an airplane is. They ain't let no plane for brazen. They let a plane for a wreck. And they let a plane for brazen. No, they let a private jet for this brand ass nigga. And what a f my jet at? You ain't don't see a goddamn thing. You hear me? Straight Alabama shit, what I see, man. I see Alabama shit. I don't see nothing else right now. What in the f going on? Y'all to land a plane for this big red dyke built ass nigga. Sis ass nigga on more your ass. More your ass like booty house boy. You know that daughter. I'm back. So you converting over more. Boy, ain't none of that shit finna stop what's going on. Listen, this. Like you converting over more when I come home. Everybody try to get cool Rallo. They think Rallo finna save the industry. He then started dissing J Prince Jr. and made a video how J Prince Jr. got slapped in his own house by his little homie. The brother, this on, this on. This on like my grandma, my granddaddy. This on Myra. This on this on Ann. This on Brian. This on this on. I put this shit on Jay Prince. I put this shit on Senior. My little nigga from Mississippi smacked the out of Junior. <laughs> oh my grandma! Listen, you got that chain on somebody smacking me. When I went to shank him, I had a little shank on this bitch. Junior came with that drawing shit like he. I'll let. Whoa! Oh my god, my boy, we don't even play like that. Shit, I don't never do that. Get what Julia said. Nigga flew to the door. That nigga flew to the other side of the door on my grandma grave flew. Nigga, what the I like that little nigga right there. Yeah, I like that little nigga. I I know you do like him. Oh my grandma, I know you do like him. Cause we really like that. Oh the nigga think. <laughs> oh y'all think we all think we sort of play with man. I wasn't even gonna go ahead and do all this, but you grabbing that mob tie so hard when we give OG I smack on that my girl. We smacked him. Whoa, he ain't do nothing out of that. Nothing, nothing. Oh my girl, my grave nigga on Shake D nigga. Oh my fucker, they dead nigga. Whoa, don't even play like that. We ain't on that lame man. Why get on some whole others? You better. Look, boy, you got the wrong nigga. He also would go on live and go at it with Jay Prince and Mop Ties. Not too long after, he made a video saying he spoke to Jay Prince and that everything was fine. He apologized on how he act and said that he wanted Jay Prince to meet him face to face so they could talk more. He didn't mention Jay Prince Jr. so I'm not sure what's going on with that situation. Last but not least, he did an interview with Fuchsia's TV and spoke about his issues with Finesse two times and how he didn't keep it real after putting him in the door with getting signed to rap a lot records. When you say, you said, go left and what? When you uh, Finesse. This is like keep it real. I, have, I did what I did for him. Yeah, put him in the door, I left. And he didn't keep it real back. He didn't say free braids. He didn't send me now. Yeah. I thought, oh. I ain't gonna lie, but like that nigga, I don't even play like that. I cut my mama about to shit like that. Back to brazing finesse two times. It started going sour. Not only did finesse two times get picked up in a jet and signed to rap a lot records and mob ties later that year, but when finesse two times would get released from prison, he wouldn't hold brazy down like brazy held him down. They even went live and finesse two times would try to ensure brazy. That he's still there for him. He's just been busy. Bro, I love you, bro. Bro, you know it ain't gonna change, bro. Just cause we on live and just cause we in front of the people, bro. I the same, bro. You know what I'm saying? And I remember the other day, bro. You hit me and you were saying about how people feel about me not shouting you. They don't understand that, like, we got a, a relationship outside of social media. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, hell yeah. They don't understand that you Elliot with a nigga when I was down, you hear me? Yeah. You know, I ain't got a chance to really just be there for you like I wanna be because like and I wanna tell you this in front of everybody, you hear me? Like yeah.
to come from to come from 23 and one lockdown, bro. Like to this lifestyle, bro. This shit taking me fast, bro. You hear me? I tell yeah. this shit in front of everybody, uh, cause I love you, bro. This shit taking me fast. You hear me? Like, but 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 it don't it don't I don't be not want to do it. It be just that. But it's so much going on so fast, and I'm trying to study it. because, bro, a nigga can get tricked at the position out here, bro. You hear me? Yeah, and you gotta watch with a with a close eye, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? When you come home, I'm really gonna sit down and really help you understand like how you gotta dissect it, bro. Like, and you gotta digest. You know what I'm saying? Like, you can't just do this. You gotta do this and watch. Yeah, so you can't so. do this, shit, bro. Like, you know what I'm saying? You gotta do it and watch in it. And, and 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 by me being kind of held back them five years kind of held me back it's like it like damn like 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 i got some catching up to do you know what i'm saying like so i be having to watch niggas bro you know what i'm saying yeah. this shit, it's brand new to me so don't yeah. don't uh, don't charge it to my heart bro i love you bro you heard me you can get whatever from me because when i was down anytime you asked me for something you would there for me bro you hear me yeah so you know how it go, baby. Real love, though. You know it from the heart. You know what's yeah. up. I already know. I already know. See, let me tell y'all something. Think tonight, y'all ain't cool. How me and Lil Brian cool? Like, just because we ain't did no song together, or just because I ain't seen his name in no song. When Finesse two times was in prison, he would tell Brazy not to do music with Money Back Yo since it was his op. So Brazy, being loyal, he never did. But after Finesse two times was released. He ended the beef with Money Back Yo in September 2022 and signed to his record label, Bread Gang, before signing with Rap A Lot and Mob Ties. Since Brazy was already feeling some type of way, he started dissing Finesse two times from prison on IG posts. When Brazy got out of prison in November 2023, he dropped his first hit called Respect, aiming at Finesse two times. Brazy would go on IG Live, dissing Finesse two times and explaining the whole issue. FNG No Love would reply to Brazy on a video talking crazy with a mob ties chain on. Finesse two times wouldn't respond to Brazy. Brazy would continue going on IG Live replying to Finesse two times brother. That's where everything is so far with all this messiness. Hopefully it all comes to an end. Besides that, Brazy's been dropping some bangers on YouTube and they've been doing numbers. And he's been enjoying life doing good. So let's hope for the best for Brazy. Hopefully he could just focus on music and family and stay out the beef. So that's the end of that hectic story. I wish the best for Honeycomb Brazy. Hopefully he could stay out of jail. Thank you to everyone who's made it to the end of the video. Let me know who y'all want me to do next. I'll be monetized again in four weeks. So when that happens, I'm going to be dropping some heat. I talked to Tay Savage the other day on live. And he gave me the okay to do a mini documentary on him. So be on the lookout for that. Make sure you follow me at Sticky Situation TV one on Instagram all together. Also make sure you like the video. It helps out the video and the algorithms. Check out my other videos too. Anyways till next time I'm out.